What's going on everybody? My name is Steven and thank you for joining me for another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. I was actually planning on my next episode being an episode about setting up the shop and getting it all kind of ready to do work in. And I have gotten started on that and recorded some of that. Uh, but then, as you may have seen if you follow me on social media, uh, I got the E90 back from the body shop. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is real quick take you for a tour around it, kind of show you what's been done, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to get the interior of the car reassembled because that's uh, mostly what needs to be done at this point. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the car and then uh, that project will be just about done. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, if you've been following me for very long, you remember the E90 was hit back here in the passenger side rear. It took out the rear passenger door and this dog leg section here where the fender uh, meets the bottom of the car and then it kind of crinkled up the body over here a little bit as well. Uh, as you can see it's back together and looking fantastic. So that door and this rear quarter have all been replaced and uh, as you can see um, my friend did a fantastic job. You can look at this and not even tell uh, where um, the original body was cut out and the new body welded in. So, uh, before we did any cutting or welding, we took the interior apart, and um, now I need to get that assembled. So let me go ahead and get the keys, get the car open, and I'll show you what we've got to do in there. All right, this is most of the interior right here, or the, the rear portion of the interior, the rear passenger area and trunk, uh, the parts we had to take out. Uh, so this is what I need to get back in the car. Take you around to show you inside real quick. Uh, there's still a few spare parts here uh, on the interior. Now this is the driver's side, so this is the side that wasn't affected at all. Um, but you can see I've got some spare parts from the donor car, a few parts off this car. Bus driving by, sorry for the noise. Uh, here in the trunk, got uh, the trunk liner and the floor and all that to put back in. And then uh, over here on this side is uh, the side that was damaged. And would you look at that, look how nice this looks here. This was all replaced and you cannot tell. Now a couple of things I don't have. This right here is uh, the plate that goes down here. Um, it still looks nice uh, but the clips on the back uh, were broken so uh, I've got one of those on order. That wasn't very expensive. Now one part that I need to replace that was kind of expensive is this chrome trim piece that goes right here. Uh, you can see like it's got on the rest of the car. Um, that part, when you take it off, um, it ruins it. There's really no two ways around it, and to paint the car properly, uh, you do have to take it off. So, uh, unfortunately, I had to replace that, and that is not um, an inexpensive part. Uh, it's ridiculous how much BMW charges for that part. Um, I looked around quite a bit for that part. The MSRP on it is around $300, or at least that's what I'm told. Um, after searching online for a while, I was able to find it for about $180. So uh, a little over half price, but uh, still uh, kind of crazy money. So anyway, I am waiting on that part, uh, that chrome trim, as well as the uh, little uh, kick plate there that goes inside the, the door. Uh, those should both be here uh, within the next couple of days, uh, but they're not going to stop us from getting the rest of the car together. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of these spare parts out. Then I'm going to spend a little bit of time cleaning. I'm going to vacuum out the floors and uh, the seat area where it's all dusty and kind of get it cleaned up a little bit. There's no need to bury dirt back in here. And then once I've got all of that cleaned out, we'll be able to start putting the car back together. And then um, I might go ahead and just detail the rest of the interior of the car as well. I'm not going to worry about the exterior right now because uh, the weather lately has been nasty and it's not calling for it to stop anytime soon. So I'm not going to worry about the exterior for the time being, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get this interior done. Just found 35 cents under the front passenger seat, or front driver's seat. This car just got cheaper. Alrighty, got all the stuff out of the back seat and floorboard and uh, the trunk area, except for those two little plugs there. Uh, but anyway, got all those parts out. Most of that was parts that came off the donor door. 
so a lot of it I won't need to use anyway, uh, but uh, I have it. Maybe I can sell it on eBay and get a few bucks back. Anyway, now that I've got all those parts out, you can see there's, you know, dirt and junk and dust from the body shop and all that uh, in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, vacuum this and uh, wipe it down real good. And then uh, I'll go ahead and get to uh, the reassembly. All right, it's a totally different day and I am actually at the house instead of at the shop. I had a whole bunch of footage recorded of putting... Uh, the the interior back into the back of the BMW and I've only got about half of it my other camera um, I have no idea, but it just ate the footage so I lost quite a bit of that footage I hate that I had a whole episode worth put together So this episode is gonna be a little different It's gonna start from the other day when I was doing that show you a little bit about the interior and then uh, it's gonna cut to now and I'm gonna kind of explain what we're doing. But right now we're actually not at the shop, we're at my house, and I've actually had this car on the road for about a week now, and today, before I take it to the shop to finish putting the interior back together, I'm actually gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rear window regulator in the driver's side uh, rear door. Uh, the window regulator is the part that actually makes the window go up and down when you hit the button for the motor and um, It's a real common failure point on these cars uh, This one. I don't know if it's the original in there. I think it is because it says BMW on it uh, but One way or the other um, It's a real common failure. I'll show you a little bit more about that uh, a little later when I get the old one out But uh, I got another one ordered from FCP Euro that is right here and I'm gonna go ahead and slap that in the car, make sure this window's working. Then we're gonna go over to the shop and we're gonna put the rest of the interior into the trunk, clean up the car a little bit, and go from there. So let's get started on that window. All right, so before we get started with replacing the regulator, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and take this door apart. Um, I actually have already had it apart once, and uh, the reason for that was because when my regulator failed, it failed with the window down in the door. We have had days and days of rain, and I knew that was coming, so I needed to make sure that that window was up, uh, closed up. So I've got it taped up now, real attractive there, nothing classier than a BMW with a window taped up. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, next thing I need to do is go ahead and take this uh, door panel back off. I left the wood trim off the other day so I wouldn't break it taking it on and off. Uh, but I go ahead and get this uh, door panel back off, get the vapor, vapor barrier off, and then I'll be able to actually access uh, the uh, window regulator. Pull the old one out, we'll slap the new one in, and uh, I'll show you a little bit more about that process. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, got the old regulator out. Here is the new regulator. I just thought I'd show you guys real quick the part that typically breaks. Um, we've got this uh, cable uh, that runs uh, through this, runs up and down. Motor sits in, uh, motor sits in here and spins it and it runs uh, the cable back and forth. And then the window actually clips into uh, this green piece here. Now, the two ends of the cable have springs on them like that. We get it to focus. There we go. Sort of. There we go. And they sit down inside here, both of them on either side. And the common failure point for these things is uh, the end will break out of one side or the other. On this one, it was over here. And they'll break out on one side or the other. And um, that's it. The window's not going up or down anymore at that point, uh, despite what you do. Now, in this case, when this thing failed, um, of course, I lost all tension because this uh, cable came flying out of it, and um, not only could I not control the window, but the cable itself got all hung up inside the door. Um, so I actually had to cut this cable uh, in order to lift this up high enough to get the window to lock into it. Um, if your your cable doesn't get tangled up as much as mine did, you don't necessarily have to take. Uh, uh, you don't necessarily have to cut this, but I did in my case so that I could get the window unattached and get it wound back up. Anyway, so there's the old one. It's out. Time to put the new one in and get the window reattached and give it a test. So let's go ahead and get started.
Alrighty, window regulator has been replaced. The window is now working, which is awesome. Big thumbs up for that, please. Uh, now the one last thing that does need to be done uh, with these BMWs, um, you need to reprogram the window. Uh, you can use it right now, but as you may have seen in that clip, it only goes up and down uh, incrementally. These windows, uh, all four windows have auto up and auto down, auto up and auto down, <laughs> um, but that part is not working right now. It stops periodically because it basically doesn't know uh, where the top and bottom is. So I'll have to reprogram the window. Um, not sure if I'll record that part, but other than that, the window is now working and the regulator is replaced. So it's time to go ahead and move on to getting the uh, rest of the trunk interior put back together and doing a little bit of cleanup on the uh, on the car. So let's go ahead and move on to that. I am here at the shop now, and uh, as you can see, uh, the trunk uh, interior is not in. I'm gonna put the seat down so we can actually have a little more light. All right, there we go, now there's a little more light. So, we never took this side out, there was never a need to. Uh, this side we took out uh, because we need to be able to peel all that back and uh, get to the interior wall there and then of course that floor piece so over here on the shelf i've got uh, the rest of the interior so i'm going to go ahead and vacuum out some of the dust and dirt and then uh, get to putting all that back in let's go ahead and get started all righty so a whole lot better now um, i really need to find one of those brush attachments for my vacuum because um, it's really hard to get this dust out uh, if I can't find a vacuum attachment or a dust attachment for my uh, vacuum then I might have to just get a different vacuum but it's a lot better than it was so now that it's good and clean let me go ahead and start putting it back together there's the trunk all put back together it's a little bit of a puzzle but if you take your time it's not too bad uh, so the things that were taken out of this car were uh, this side panel of course the battery cover uh, and tool thing uh, tool box or whatever you in case you were wondering yes this car still has all its tools uh, so battery cover tool uh, toolbox side panel um, this threshold piece or whatever that's called and then of course the spare tire uh, slash hide a cubby section all of that was taken out all right now that that's all back in I'm gonna go ahead and move on and clean up the interior a little bit I wiped out the back a little bit uh, when I was putting it together the other day but uh, I dusted the front just so we weren't getting dirty every time we got in it but now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down real good so let's move on to that
All right, my cameras are all dying. Sorry, there's a bug. My camera's batteries are all dying. Uh, so I'm on my cell phone. Sorry for the video quality. I'm sure it's a little bit less. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and try to install uh, this trim, which goes right here on uh, the rear passenger door. That was, the original one is, uh, it's killed when you pull it off. So I uh, had to order that part. It was crazy expensive. I could not believe how much money that little part costs. It is not available aftermarket that I could find and you can't buy it used because once they're pulled off, they're ruined. So um, uh, it's about a 300 and something dollar part retail. Uh, shopping around, I was able to find it online for $180. So I guess that's a win, but it's still a very expensive part. So I'm gonna to try to put it on here without damaging it, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, there it is. Chrome trim installed. That makes the car look so much better. That one means missing piece of trim. Uh, really does make a difference. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, the threshold piece in that goes down here. Um, not sure if I'm gonna be able to get this on camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that now. Getting close to wrapping things up. I don't have what it takes to vacuum, or excuse me, to uh, shampoo carpets. So I vacuumed them now. You can see there's, you know, a few things uh, in the floors that could stand to be, you know, shampooed. So I'll have that done at some point. Um, but I did want to go ahead and finish this car off. So I bought a set of original BMW floor mats. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those installed now. And that'll just about wrap us up for tonight. All right, it is yet another day. My camera's batteries were all dying and I was running out of light anyway. So I apologize if this video has a lack of continuity. I'll try to fix all of that in editing. But anyway, the car is back together and back on the road. When I got the car back from the body shop, of course uh, the uh, rear interior was all removed, the seats and all of that. Uh, the trunk interior was mostly removed, missing some trim pieces. Um, needed an alignment still because after we did that suspension repair, uh, wanted to make sure that the alignment was spot on. So I went down to the BMV and got a 96 hour trip permit uh, here in Indiana. Um, it does take a couple of weeks to get a rebuilt title, and that's if you pay for a speed title. Uh, so it takes a long time, and you know, I ran into some issues with this one. Just there was some miscommunication between, um, well, mostly it was miscommunication on BMV's part. They misread my stuff. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. In any case, it took a while to get the title, but in the meantime, I got the trip permit, got the car down for an alignment, and then took it over to the shop and uh, got the interior, um, the rear interior put back in. Uh, that's what I'm missing a lot of the video of. That was a real struggle. Um, and uh, if you wanna know more about how the, the rear interior goes together, uh, you know, maybe I can do a video on that sometime. But it, suffice it to say, I did get the interior put back together and uh, was able to start driving the car again once I got my title and got it registered. Then yesterday we got the uh, trunk interior put back together, got the uh, the chrome trim on the passenger door, and then that threshold plate, kick plate, whatever that's called, got that put in. Did a really good detail on the car, and it is looking really nice in here now. Um, so, what's left for this car? Well, really not much. It needs a good uh, good detail on the outside. Uh, really needs a good cut and polish. and get that plastic film off the front because it just looks like crap. Um, and uh, beyond that, the car is done. It's it's the rebuilt uh, the rebuild is over, and it's just a driver now. 
So you may recall when I got this car, if you watched the original reveal video for this car, um, I bought it as a rebuild project with the intent to flip it, but said I might keep it for a little while uh, just because I liked it so much. Uh, and then I was contacted by a viewer who said they were interested in it. And I uh, haven't heard back from him in a little while, so I'm not sure if he's still interested or not. But I'm actually thinking about making this my daily driver for the next few months, maybe six months or so. Um, I sold my main daily driver um, and uh, got rid of all my car payments. Um, so I've got my two trucks and then this now that I can drive as a daily driver. With that in mind, since I'm not planning to get rid of the car um, anytime particularly soon, um, the only thing really left to do on this car is basic maintenance. Now, because I haven't owned the car um, for all of its life or even for a while, I really don't know 100% what its maintenance history is. Um, you can tell just by looking at it that the previous owner took really good care of it. And I did pull a Carfax report on this car. It's interesting, uh, prior to the accident, this was a one owner car. And then uh, of course it was in an accident, the insurance company totaled it out and I bought it. So technically I'm only the second owner of this car, which is really cool. Uh, to have this car in such great shape as only a previously a one owner now a two owner car uh, Since it's gonna be my daily driver. I'm gonna do some basic maintenance on it so that I know um, What its maintenance history is I'm going to do uh, all the normal stuff like uh, oil and oil filter change air uh, engine air filter change cabin air filter change I'm gonna go ahead and do the spark plugs and coils um, That's something that needs to be done periodically on these cars, and uh, I don't know when the last time it was done uh, It runs pretty well um, every once in a while there's just the slightest little bit of a uh, of a um, you know a little flutter or whatever you want to call it in the tachometer when it's idling maybe just a little bit uh, it's mostly pretty smooth but I'm gonna go ahead and do that stuff uh, so that I'll know it's been taken care of and just to make it run as well as it possibly can uh, let me know if you guys want to see a video on any of this maintenance stuff for uh, an e90 BMW I mean there's other videos out there um, but if you want to see that I'll go ahead and make a video for my channel uh, showing you all these different kind of maintenance items on this car other than that car's ready to go it's just a daily driver and I have been driving it now for about a week and a half as my daily driver and it's doing a great job so this car's done thank you for watching the rebuild process it's been long I know uh, and I haven't made a lot of videos about it because to be honest with you a lot of the work wasn't done by me that's something I'd like to learn to do is body work and paint um, I watch a lot of other rebuild channels and I've seen some of them starting to dabble in it and that's something I'd like to do especially now that I've got a shop um, I'd love to start dabbling in uh, body work and welding and painting and things like that uh, so um, you know maybe I'll start doing that in the future but on this car I did let my friend who has a body shop do that work and uh, he did a great job but uh, unfortunately it doesn't make for a lot of great videos so um, anyway I apologize that this series has not been quite as succinct or as fast as I'd have liked it to have been um, but it is done and the car turned out fantastic all right that's gonna wrap us up for this video thank you for joining me for another crossroads rebuild project and thank you for watching along as I've worked on the e90 BMW I love this car I'm excited to be driving this car I'm excited it's turned out as well as it has and uh, again let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see me do a video um, on uh, some of the maintenance items I mentioned uh, and if you uh, if I get enough response then I'll go ahead and do that next project on the agenda though for uh, Crossroads rebuild is to get into that uh, Camry engine swap need to get that going my buddy's uh, waiting on that car and uh, so I'm looking forward to getting into that also have the e36 BMW convertible have some maintenance and repairs to do to that car I'd like to get that car roadworthy uh, before winter um, it has a clean title, so it is street legal, but it's not really street ready. So uh, need to work on that car. Hope to do some videos soon on that one as well. Been really busy. Haven't produced a whole lot of videos recently. Uh, really hoping to change that and start pumping out a few more videos on a little bit more of a regular schedule. We'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you're notified each time I upload a new video. And then go ahead and find me on social media. I'll put the links down here below. And uh, find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, um, and uh, where I post pictures and updates on my projects there as well. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.